Hi, and welcome to something for the weekend. I was almost about to have a little thing and say, have I, have I taken my microphone off mute? But no, it's just Robin smiling at me. <laughs> all the way up there in the West Midlands at the other end of our long virtual wheeled sofa. So we're going to go back to the West Midlands for some audio description in a minute and also to talk a little bit more about what we're dressing up to go out to stay in to do. But first, an official welcome. Now I know that my microphone's working. This show is brought to you as always by Together 2012. We're led by disabled artists. We're based in the main Paralympic host borough of Newham. I'm Jude Gosling, also known as the artist Jude 90. I'm artistic director of Together 2012. We've lost count of, of how long we've been living in my studio, but it's more than 16 months that I've been here together with our chair, the artist and activist Julie Newman. So I think before we go over to the West Midlands, we'll talk a bit more about today's show and, of course, what we're dressed up to go out to stay in to do. We've been dressing up to go out to stay in for longer than I can remember, but it's more important than ever if you're in the shielding group or living with somebody who is. There are record rates of COVID-19 around, so today we're going to talk, as always, about lots of things that you can enjoy from home, including, of course, starting three hours ago, the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games and later in the summer, the Paralympics. It's a bit confusing, isn't it, Tokyo 2020, when it's actually 2021? I think they just had so much merchandise already sitting in the warehouses, and we've been relieving them of some of it, and it's actually a great way to show our athletes some support. So, shall I start with my audio description? Okie doke. I have a self-styled hennard corona crop, mercifully hidden under a white... I think it's a visor. It's like a baseball cap without a crown and it's a white Team GB official visor. And then I have pale olive skin, green eyes behind black plastic glasses, black wrist braces, silver colored jewelry and an official Tokyo 20. Well, in fact, the T-shirt says Tokyo 2021 and it's an official T-shirt with the Olympic rings. So over to you, Judy. What variation on a theme have you got? Hi, I'm Julie, Julie Newman. I'm the chair of T Together 2012. I'm also dressed up to go to the Tokyo Olympics. I have a red baseball cap, which says Team GB. Um, it's got a white trim on the outside. I've got um, long flowing locks currently <laughs> of a, a sort of, um, I was going to say that they're not auburn anymore. Let's be honest, but they are gold and silver. Um, and I've got a white T-shirt similar to Jews, but just several sizes larger, which says Tokyo 2021. So it's not the true merch, but it's it's uh, it's a sort of style of, of a supporter. Well, no, some of this has actually come with true merch labels. Yes, it does have the labels. It's true. <laughs> it's, just, it's got the wrong year. <laughs> As it's from East, as it's ordered from East London, it's not always guaranteed that it's going to be completely official labels or not. Behind us, we have our teddy bear Tanny, already dressed in sporting clothes and now carrying a Team GB flag. And Tanny is sitting in front of our Together 2012 banner. You can only see a little bit of it here. You can see the full thing on our website, but it's covered with images of the art forms that we enjoy every week, in fact, at the moment. So everything from carnival arts, visual arts, photography, filmmaking, dance on screen, live music, poetry, spoken word, and much, much more and very soon we'll be moving on and looking at some of the poems and artwork that people have been producing this week but also we have coming up for the umpteenth time but getting closer and closer to the real thing our clockwork paralympics when we race clockwork toys for the right of one of our teddy bears to wear a medal 
Needless to say, Robin's teddies have far more medal choice than ours. We've got one gold plastic commemorative 2012 medal here. Lots of teddy bears. Robin's got very few teddy bears, but as our Paralympian, lots and lots of real medals. At some point when the pandemic is finally over, I think we're going to have to do a raid on each other's houses and have some more <laughs> equitable distribution. But now, Robin, over to you. Who are you? What are you wearing? Well, Good afternoon. Um, so I'm Robin Surgina. Uh, I'm business director at Together 2012, um, and uh, I am an artist known as Angry Fish as well. I am up here, um, as you said, at the other end of our virtual wheeled sofa um, in Sutton Coalfield. I'm in my own studio space. Uh, behind me, I've got some red velvet curtains. Um, I am sporting. It seems to keep growing my hair more than others i've had it cut loads and it still seems to keep growing so my advice is don't get it cut um but i have white I hair. say that it's much easier i mean julie i don't recognize julie in our publicity photos from last april because <laughs> her hair's grown just so much but um but it certainly beats i think trying to keep it trimmed with the dog trimmers which is what i've been doing because my hair just unlike other people seems to grow absolutely straight up and out like a bush anyway on that pleasant note <laughs> we uh, i so i have my white hair um growing downwards mostly um i've got uh no rimmed black armed glasses that are you can't see from that angle but have broken twice and are super glued at the present moment. Um, just thought I'd share that really. Uh, and, and, and they are disguising blue eyes behind them. Um, and I am wearing, uh, in honor of uh, the GB team, um, a, a GB tracksuit um, that I've obviously dressed myself because my collar is all over the place. Um, that is a, a mix of dark blue, red, light blue and almost an electric blue and if this works bear with me uh, i think hopefully you could see that that said great britain on the back um as this is my tracksuit top from the 1991 european swimming championships and I have to say, very stylish it is too. So later in the show, as always, we'll be recommending free things you can do online or offline for the week ahead. But of course, the games will be continuing for the next two weeks. And pretty much because of the time difference at all times of the day and night. So just before we move on, what are you looking forward to most, Robin? Is it the swimming because you're a swimmer? I mean, I think... Uh, because I'm, not only because I'm a swimmer, but breaststroke was my number one. Then seeing what Adam Peaty can do in the pool um, from a GB perspective. Um, but then there's a couple of other swimmers. There's this 16 year old who has broken the junior world record in the 100 and 200 free uh, at the World Juniors last week. Um, so he's going to be up against Caleb Dressel, the adult record holder but like they're you know he's 16 and he's going to be fighting for the for that medal um other things i like diving it's not just i like water i always don't always find diving fascinating um and i like the floor gymnastics i don't know if it's something to the fact that i you know i can jump about half a mil at best um and i just find <laughs> I'm um, I can jump higher than that bunny hop in my wheelchair, but I just the the, the floor work. They, you know, they run and they do these flips and turns and jumps and triple backs and all the rest of it. I just, you know, that is to to me that is just because there's so much strength and agility um, and timing kind of all together. What about yourselves? <laughs> Well, very similar, actually. And I was going to add that a lot of the swimmers and divers, of course, train in Newham up at the Olympic Park. So, you know, an extra kind of cheer for them. And I know particularly I'm looking forward to seeing Tom Daly for the third Olympics and seeing how he's doing. I know he's been training in Newham a lot. Julie, what are you looking forward to most? I love it all. I'll be honest with you. I started off by watching the women's football team um, on Wednesday morning. And I was so impressed. 
I'm not a great football fan. I don't know all about these offsides and so on and so so forth, throws in and free kicks. But it, I just thought it was excellent. I loved it. I, I loved how the, ga the game was so evenly distributed. The ball was going up and down the pitch quite a lot. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to the equestrian events. I, I love the equestrian events, the dressage particularly, um, and the velodrome. I adore the velodrome. I think partly because we were involved with the design of the velodrome at the Queen Elizabeth Park. But I always have a, a special affinity for, for the velodrome and velodrome events. Yes, I'd completely forgotten. But of course, when you were chairing UK Disabled People's Council, who helped to found us, you were very much involved in the whole design of the Olympic Park. So you've probably got more of an understanding than most of us when you look at the venues to see what's going on. So it's a great fortnight of sport coming up. Don't think there are no disabled people in the Olympics, because of course, apart from all of the athletes with mental health difficulties who don't qualify for the Paris, there's actually a surprising number of disabled athletes who again don't qualify for paras but there's nowhere else for them to go i wish i could remember her name but there was a great example at wimbledon of that female tennis player who i think has four fingers and four toes on each hand and was just playing the most incredible tennis so like I say, spot the disabled athletes along the way if you can. But now we're going to move on to this week's pop-up poetry club, which takes place every Wednesday morning by phone. We phone you, put on a group call, and we pay for the call. Robin, I'm getting a little bit of noise coming through your microphone. I think it might be keyboard noise, but... Um, not sure whether you've got an extra mic switched on there. So today's theme, or I should say this week's theme, because it was actually Wednesday, was, is it favourite films, films I like? Films I like. Which is, a, again, a wonderful thing to be doing, particularly in all this heat, because irrespective of COVID, it's not a good idea to be going out in the hot weather. So what did you want to start with, Julie? Um... Well, I wanted to start with actually saying how blown away I was by the by the club. It was fantastic. I was really, really impressed at the diversity of people's understanding and their contributions. It was fantastic. I wanted to start with a poem by Dawn Barber called "The Secret Garden," which is the title of her one of the films she likes. <clears throat> this was such a magical, calming film with all the lovely flowers and animals. The sweet little robin, you felt like you wanted to be there. Lovely children playing happy and free, putting their heart and soul into making the garden nice, finding something to love. And I loved it when the little girl opened the secret door with the key. It was so exciting. They found the secret garden and it found them and gave them love too. Oh, thank you, Dawn. And that's a great summary of the plot as well. Robin, what have you got for us first? Okay, the first one I've got is from Glory Senga. Uh, it's entitled The Little Mermaid. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think I'm the girl? The girl who has everything. Look at this trove. Who cares? I've got more. You want anything in the box? I've got 20. That, that's the end. <laughs> <laughs> May I just say, what was really lovely was that Glory sang that as his contribution. It was really beautiful. Yeah, it's a shame that unfortunately this, the quality of the phones are not such that we're able to record them in person. So this, feel, this poem is by Ellen Goody and it's called Trap Me. Trap, trap, lots of traps. Trap me, you will keep me home alone. Falling down the stairs, glow sticks glow up in the dark. Trap me, keep me forever. Now, I don't know which film that was about, but I can home think alone. of about, I was gonna say, I can think of about three, not just home alone, that that brings back images of. What have you got for us next? I've got a contribution from Taylor Henville, uh, which is the film that she likes called The Witches. Mice running through the kitchen. They know what they need to do. Got to stop the witches. Got to pour the potion in the soup. With a flick of a tail, the potion's in. Now it's time to scurry. 
Gotta dodge the kitchen knives. Gotta get back to grandma. Hurry. The witches eat the soup. No clue what's ahead. And just like that, with puffs of green and purple smoke, the witches twist and melt into little rodents scurrying from the hotel folk. So this is one. Don't read that poem if you haven't seen the film. Robin, <laughs> what for us next? Okay, this is one uh, from Dwayne Bryan, and this is entitled A Film I Like. There are many films I like. Heat and Pulp Fiction. Watched again and again, it's like addiction. Summer science fiction. Go to the cinema when you pay for your ticket. You get your popcorn and maybe a drink. And you sit in your seat and get quite excited. And I shuffle in my seat. Sometimes to me, the cinema is quite loud. But that does not bother me. I am here to see it out. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, Dwayne. This is Crystal Peasy, and it's called Musicals Make Me Happy. I like to talk about the films I like, especially musicals. Music makes me happy. I like musical films. They make me happy and excited. I also like to sing along with the music. When the music is over, it's very hard to leave. I love to dance. The dancing makes me happy. The musical is part of my life. Life is not easy without musicals, and if the musical is not around, life is harder, and my life will be very quiet, and my life is never the same again. Thank you, Crystal, and I particularly liked the fact that Crystal was writing more about films in general rather than a particular film, even though that was, I admit, the, the topic. So, Robin, what else have you got for us? Okay, my final one for today comes from Duncan Bridgestock. Uh, lovely to have, a, have a, a new piece from you, Duncan. This is called Listing to Port. The Martians are coming. Look out. Beware. The Wombles are coming. Look out. Caution. The Clangers are coming. Look out. Attention. The Cybermen are coming. Look out. Hey. Where's all gummage is coming? Look out, baby. Bungle and Zippy are coming. Look out. Oh, yeah, Daddy. Bill and Ben, the flowerpot men are coming. Look out, I'm telling you. Cat weasel's coming. Look out, I mean, Zippy, the bush kangaroo is coming. Look out. When I say look out, boom, boom. <laughs> Thank you, Duncan. I think I'll take that more about children's television than films, but I could recognise it all, which is possibly slightly about age two, I'm not sure. <laughs> Julie, finally, what can we have your film from... your? Your poem about films for this week, please. Yes, this is called Films I Like. Today I see the stars, but not in the sky. They shine on a screen, once silver and behind velvet curtains, with enthusiastic fingers hitting the keys of plonky pianos or soaring organs. No voices were heard from open mouths, just boards flashing across the screens, with ver words of entreaty writ large, pleading for mercy or chasing after villains, the action fast, the movements jerky. But now they shine within my home. The screen lights up, the music starts, credit rolls and the stories begin to wend their inevitable way, drawing us into their magical worlds. worlds. The box of delights opens up so much and brings the lives of bygone years faithfully drawn. They now become like old friends, so familiar their stories told so often they blend into our lives. Regency worlds, rich in colours and passion, others drawn in the relentless heat of poverty, echo songs of loss and struggle. So many stories, so many choices. Our worlds are rich with films. Thank you. And I particularly loved all the things about silent films. And just to say, we've recommended before, you can actually find a huge number of full-length older feature films to watch free on YouTube. So if you're interested, for example, in Hollywood silent films, type it into YouTube and just see what comes up. Just hours and hours and hours of 
fascinating viewing. But we're going to move on to this week's art club. And first of all, this morning's still life session. The art club runs on Zoom from 11 to 12 on a Tuesday and a Friday. And on a Friday, Alison Marchant, who leads our club's program, creates a still life. We can also text you the still life picture if that's easier for you or email it to you. So if you'd like to join in, drop us a line, info at together2012.org.uk. And the picture itself, if you want to join in from home this week will be on our website by six o'clock on our highlights and links page so the highlights and links page goes up every week with the poems the pictures the films and the links for the recommendations all of that's there very easy to find from www.together2012.org.uk just go to the together 2012 tv menu and you've got the pull down menu or you have a direct link so this is this week's still life i'm going to pop it on screen and then get robin to audio describe it okay so uh what we have here is a pair of I think you'd call them plimsolls um, uh, with a sort of leopard print upper um, and a leopard print sole that you can just see inside the shoe. Uh, then with a white bow and tapes across uh, the, what would be the bridge of the foot, um, giving it a lovely shape. And then uh, like, like a lot of plimsolls, there is what I would call the welt all the way around in white but with a black pinstripe following that round. And then there's a collection of um, polished beads and, and stones of, of lovely colours, kind of a bit like a beach, but a multicoloured beach. Brilliant. Thanks, Robin. So these images have been done by Sophia. So Sophia has managed to complete two pictures in the time, mostly using crayon with some felt tip. And she's done one set of shoes in an orange and then she's chosen green and pink for the others. And then this is a painting by Crystal Peasy and she's used brown paint for the shoes and blues and pinks and purples for the stone. That's her interpretation. Then this is a lovely coloured pencil drawing with, I think, a bit of pastel. That's by Margaret Spence. That's great, Margaret. Margaret's just joined the group. And then finally for today, this is Lee Brooker and Lee is holding up a coloured pencil drawing, which as always is really quite beautiful. Thank you for that, Lee. So again, if you're interested in joining the art club, drop us a line, info at together2012.org.uk. On a Tuesday, the art club runs a session called Make and Natter. And there's really two choices for that session. You can either bring whatever craft project you're doing along and share it with other people, get some feedback, see what they're doing, and just be a bit social, get to know each other as artists. Or you can join in with whatever activity Alison is leading, which is generally based on recycled materials. So I'm just going to pop up a few images from the last week. And this first image is an example where somebody has made the shaker, which we've talked about for our kitchen carnival project. Our kitchen carnival project is running at at the moment, it does what it says on the tin. It's about joining in with a carnival from your own kitchen using the materials you have in the kitchen. And this is a shaker that's very simply made from a milk bottle, with, well, a plastic milk bottle which with a handle which has been cleaned and decorated with felt tip pen. And then it's got little bits of cut up plastic inside and I've lost the note that says who made that but it will be credited on the website later. And then this is Crystal Peasy and Crystal is bringing along pom-poms to the session. And this next photo shows one of the installations that Crystal's been creating at home with her pom-poms. And we've had 
two or three people sending in pom-pom photos and doing different things. I know Crystal's actually covered her flat. So this is a very, very lovely picture of all sorts of different colored pom-poms together hanging down from a pink ceiling. And then these are some of the um, montages and collages that Duncan Bridgestock is still working on. And Duncan is using lots of recycled card. He has these shapes, which I think are really sort of l shapes. So these are L-shapes, which are mostly white with printing on black. This next one has a whole range of different shapes. And this is actually in different colors. So there's purple, orange, blue, red and two different greens this one again is well in fact it's a bit too complicated for me to audio describe but it's on an orange background and it has a really big variety of different textures and patterns that duncan's been able to cut out of recycled materials this is going back to some of the L shapes, but he's been using, I think it almost looks like a tube map or the back of some packets. So again, there's quite a lot of printing on those shapes. And here Duncan has used two large white circles and some very, very interesting cutout shapes. Absolutely fascinating. So I'm going to take that off. And just add that Duncan's collages are going to be exhibited as part of that Together 2021 Disability History Month Festival, which, as always, runs in November, December. If you've missed the publicity, we have recently opened entries for commissions. So if you have an idea for a project that you think would work for our online festival with a budget of up to £1,000, again, drop us a line, info at together2012.org.uk. But if you go to our website, www.together2012.org.uk, look at the 2021 programme, there's a whole page explaining more more about the commissions and how you can apply for the festival. And I'm delighted that Duncan's the first art club member to have a solo show as part of that annual festival. But now we're going to move on and look at some more craft activities that you can join in from home. And the first is another one of our kitchen carnival activities. And this is teaching you how to make a set of what we call percussion pan drums just from using your kitchen recycling. And just to say to the wonderful Julia from Global Real Time Captioning that this video already has captions on it. The Kitchen Carnival. Make your own percussion pan drums. The Kitchen Carnival percussion pan drums use different sized cans to make different sounds. They are inspired by the steel pan drums of Trinidad and Tobago. To make the Kitchen Carnival percussion pan drums you need empty cans with metallic bottoms like drinking chocolate or instant potato cans, cling film, a washing up sponge or scourer, acrylic paint and felt tip pens if you want to decorate your pan drums, two wooden spoons or cooking utensils to make beaters, or you can use chopsticks. Brush out the cans thoroughly, take off the lids and turn the cans upside down. Hit the bottoms with a wooden spoon or chopstick to hear which sound each can makes. You want each can that you use to make a different sound. If you like, paint each can a different colour using the lids as palettes. You can use a brush or cut off a piece of sponge and sponge the paint on. You will usually need to put two or three coats of paint on each can. Leave plenty of time for each coat to dry before putting on the next. While you're waiting, rub your spoons with the scratchy side of the sponge to smooth them out. If you want to, decorate your spoons with felt tip pens. But remember, always keep a window or door open if you're using felt tips. When your cans are dry, you're ready to put them together. Pull off enough cling film to tie around each can once, plus enough to go again around all the cans together, leaving enough cling film over to make a loop for your hand. You can hold your percussion pans in one hand and a stick in the other, or put the pans onto a surface and play with two sticks.
So to join in with the Kitchen Carnival, you we have a shortcut website address. It takes you still to our website, but it's just kitchencarnival.org. So www.kitchencarnival.org. You'll find out how to make instruments, how to make costumes, how to join in, and lots more interesting facts about Carnival. Robin, did you want to say something there as a musician? Um, yes, in as much as I think it's it's really good trying to find ways of, of making different sounds. I mean, it's all very well having, you know, instruments that cost lots of money. But, um, you know, you can experiment, you can put things together, um, you know, you can create the sound of your house, for example, you know, if you're making any films over the next few weeks or, you know, looking towards the festival um, about home, like we did last year, but actually just using stuff you can make around the house to create the audio track to go with it. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things we are discussing in our carnival workshops, which take place every Wednesday afternoon at the moment with the very wonderful Clary Salandy from Mahogany Carnival Design. If you're interested in joining the workshops as part of our club's program, again, info at together2012.org.uk or follow the contact links through from the kitchencarnival.org website. Now we're going to move on for one of a series of activities joining in with Stera. And on the website under the join in program, you can also find previous films by Stera, which you can follow too. And I'm delighted to say that when Stera showed us two weeks ago how to make a bear, her bear won third prize out of 59 entries in the Bear Festival. So these activities are well worth a second look too. But let's see what Stera is doing this week. Oh, hi, I'm Stera and I made a hedgehog. I made a hedgehog. Because I helped a hedgehog, I helped it when it was sick. It's better. Wow. It's better. And it came oh. home. That's good. And you're happy. Wow. Bye. So for anybody who couldn't see that, just to do some audio description, we saw the original sick hedgehog, which they found and took to a sanctuary and then released again later. And then Stera made her own hedgehog, collecting twigs from the wood and pushing them into a potato to make the most incredibly realistic looking hedgehog. Stara and Hannah have been shielding again, probably they've lost count too, for a very long time now in what is basically a barn in the wood. But you can find sticks like that in most of the parks or indeed if you're lucky enough to have one in your own back garden. But now we're going to move on and it seems like a particularly significant clockwork Paralympics today. 
I believe we have, we're still running in a new new set of competitors who are Clockwork Meerkats. So to join in from home, you just have to decide, do you want the competitor on the right hand side of the screen to be yours or the left? What do you think, Robin? I'm going to go left today. So the Birmingham Commonwealth representative will be on the left of the screen as we look at it. And we have a we're back on the usual race course along the veranda balcony. What would you call it, Jenny? Landing. The tiny little landing just outside my studio, which is also surrounded by vintage school stories. So let me put this on, Robin, and then I'll get you to do the rest of the audio description. So here we are on the, on the beautiful mosaic track that we run on. It's, it's designed to confuse and not aid straight running. So we'll see how well that works with these competitors. So we're about to go. Oh, well, and the Birmingham one has just run straight off into the side. And that was very quick. Sorry, I was, I was, I was in shock there. Actually. <laughs> the, yeah. The I know the speed really depends on the competitors, like so many different Paralympic games, and um, the meerkat category seems to be quite fast. Do I gather we actually won for the first time in weeks and weeks and weeks? You did actually win, so congratulations to yourselves <laughs> and Tanny Bear. What I love about people who are as competitive as our gold medal multi award-winning Paralympian is they're so competitive you can tell he's got gritted teeth even though it's a teddy bear in a clockwork talk. What you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately Tanny's just dropped her team GB sign so we'll have to get back later. I don't know what you've just dropped Robin but I can hear it all the way in East London. All right Judy it'll do. <laughs> Judy's quite competitive as well. She may not actually be a sports person, but if she was, I think she would probably have quite a lot of medals as well. But now we're going to look at the week ahead and some of the things that we personally recommend that you do online or offline, but always safely and for free. And of course, as we've said, there are the games. Actually, it's not on my list, but I just wanted to flag up again. There are a whole range of documentaries about Tokyo 2020, Team GB and so on on BBC iPlayer. And some of them are absolutely fascinating, including a three-part series looking at how Britain changed, really. I was saying to Robin beforehand, from the country I grew up in in the 60s and 70s, where it was considered to be very bad form to take sports too seriously, to the 21st century, where the British decided they want to be at the top of the medal tables. And in Rio, I think almost were, which was really quite incredible. But there's also some great documentaries about individual athletes, including, I think, Adam, Adam Peaty. So they're well worth watching if there is a sport on that you're just not interested in. And I think iPlayer is the best place to watch the sport when it's not on the main channels as well, isn't it? Although there's also some games on YouTube, so don't forget that either. So what's the first thing you want to recommend apart from the games, Robin? Um Something on iPlayer. Uh, it's a, a, a newly released series called The Watch. Um, I, some of you may have heard of Terry Pratchett, who wrote the Discworld series of books. Um, well, the, the Watch is a an in, it, well, it, it takes the idea from Discworld and some of the characters, and it's created a kind of fictional um, somewhere in the universe crime world. Um, it's a comedy, it's a dark comedy, I think would be the best description, an adult comedy, but I've watched um, the first couple of episodes and it's just very funny. Um, and, and again, it's, it's something that there is, um, unless chasing criminals is sport, there's no sport in it. <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure the people who are not interested in sport at all will be delighted to hear. 
Although I would say, again, there is something in a sport for everybody, including things like the art, the design and all of those aspects. And there's some very, very creative gymnastics and um, different activities as well that's, you know, near as damned it actually art. But the first thing I would like to recommend is a free hour long course on Tuesday, which has also got BSL interpretation and automatic captions. And it's about how to use Instagram for artists. Now, some artists still aren't on Instagram and some like me are, but post very rarely. So I'm really looking forward to this. There's Jennifer Gilbert from the Jennifer Lauren Gallery running it. It, along with Adam Kazari and Adam is the social media and content manager from the Royal Academy of Arts so he really really knows his stuff and it talks so it's really learning about how to promote your work and indeed network successfully which is something I don't successfully really do at all on Instagram so you can book that via Eventbrite or go to our highlights and links page from six o'clock and just click the link there what's your first recommendation Julie well I'm very excited uh, because I came across the Google virtual tours of art and culture um, when I was a little girl, I was convinced I could fly. My grandmother took me to see Peter Pan, and it really went to my heart. I was convinced I could fly. Um, and the tour that's, that uh, leaped out at me was the uh, tour of Paris rooftops. And it's wonderful. It's absolutely lovely. I really recommend it, unless, of course, you've got a fear of heights. But... <laughs> That aside, if you don't, uh, it's well worth it. You're sort of right up on the on the Paris rooftops, and and you just you get a three sixty degree. It's like um, the Google that we did last street year, view. the Street View, yes. But it's not. It's it's bigger and it's better and it's stunning. But if you go to the um, the Google virtual tours of art and culture there's a whole range of things that you can click into if if paris rooftops isn't your thing there might be others there this sounds amazing i remember being 18 and living and working in paris between school and university you know just to have a roof over my head but being in the centre of Paris and being up amongst the rooftops, you know, because things like the Pompidou Centre, which were very new then, you could go all the way up to the outside in the sort of famous, your now famous lift and then see all over the top and different places. So, yeah, I might check out the Paris rooftops myself. But what else do you recommend, Robin? Well, just while we're reminiscing, we got engaged on a boat on the Seine under the Notre Dame to there. That's <laughs> Tracy and I. That is not a we we um so my he's next so smooth. he's so smooth very sweet. Yeah, yeah, you should have seen me trying to get back off the floor of the boat after I proposed, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, not the obvious thing for wheelchair users to do, but hey. So <laughs> so the, the, this recommendation is actually um really from Tracy, who unfortunately um isn't with us today. Um uh, and it's a it's a David Hockney online drawing class. Um, now David Hockney is a, a, has been a you know a famous British artist since at least the seventies, and he's he's from Yorkshire and he's had a, a whole range of fantastic um, works. But he's done a lot of forest stuff, and that class is tomorrow, which is going to be too late to book on to. It was in last week's recommendations. This one is actually for next Saturday, the 31st, but booking is advised. Um, it's from five till half six and it's free with a suggested donation if you can afford it. Um, and it's moving from his outside work to, to his work, his paintings of um, and drawings of people and their relationships with their own inside spaces. Um, and they've got a live model in as part of it. So if you so, you know, you can join the class live. It kind of says, bring your pens and papers um, and, and you know, join in. Um, you know, and if anyone has a budding artist, then it, you know, it's, it looks at his techniques as well as, you know, kind of his, just not just looking at his pictures. Yeah, I mean, I, re I was very, very lucky. I, I had a sort of series of invitations to um, take openings and I went to the... Um... David Hockney one as part of that and in fact ended up talking to his gardener 
And he was explaining what, you know, that actually David Hockney, when he was at his home in Yorkshire, was just so down to earth and so much part of the village. And when he got this opening coming up, he insisted that there were some tickets for the villagers, which I thought was very, very impressive. And I have to say, the very first time I'd been to one of those kind of high-powered RT events and realised that an artist had been that thoughtful. I think the other thing about David Hockney is he's really embraced the iPad. And of course, for a lot of disabled artists, drawing and painting on the iPad is either much more accessible or is only accessible on the iPad. Some of the, um, or part of the show at Tate, they they showed you where you can record the iPad in sequence. So you could see the whole process of how he painted the picture because he just recorded it. And the picture was shown with all these different layers of digital paint building up. So it was absolutely fascinating. I forget how old David Hockney is now, but it just goes, you know, he's always relevant. He's always making new work. It's always relevant. It is never too late. And speaking of which, my ne next recommendation is Voices from Prison by Clean Break. And Clean Break is an arts organisation that's been working with prisoners for many years. And it's on next Wednesday from six to quarter past seven online and it's free. And it's celebrating creative writing by women prisoners from 12 women's prisons, I think all 12 women's prisons. And of course, many, many women in prison are actually disabled with mental health difficulties or learning difficulties shouldn't be there at all. This is about their lives, particularly under COVID-19, which of course have been completely invisible like so many of ours. So there's readings and a panel discussion. You can find that Voices from Prison on Eventbrite or the link will be on our highlights and links page. Robin, what else do you have for us? Um, well, other than the obvious one, um, which um, we have links and stuff, the being the uh, Olympics, as we've talked lots about, um, we're going to see a film shortly. Um, and this weekend sees the end of the Galway, Galway film. I'm going to say festival because I don't want to pronounce the Irish word incorrectly. Um, what I do know is some of the, is it looks really, really interesting. And you're, you're going to see, uh, as I say, a film about a disabled artist who's taking part in the festival shortly. Um, it It's just, uh, no, it looks really, really good. I just do know that um, very recently I found out that it's not all able to see in the UK unless you know how to use a virtual something network. Um, but not everything is Brexit. Yeah, yeah it, it's very confusing. So I apologise if in the end the link says, sorry, you can't watch that in Newham or something. But um, there will be other ways to see the film, which is particularly interesting. Yeah, and I would really encourage people to keep an ear out. We, we can't recommend everything, but lots of film festivals are online for the first time and it means you can go for the first time i appeared in a panel at glasgow film festival a few months ago i could never have gone in person i just wouldn't have been able to spare the time and the energy and i very much doubt they could have afforded it by the time i'd got the accessible cabs and the support worker and so on so it's that being able to not just watch the films but there's often panel discussions networking events you know take advantage of the digital world to go places we've never been whilst still staying safely at home so I think that's pretty much coming to the end but have you got a final one for us Julie yes I found the um, UK film channel which is full of free films um, some of them are on YouTube um, but they're, they're, it's fantastic and it's free to watch so is it a website or is it on it's a website um, and I've, I found the documentaries, which I adored. I thought they were lovely. Um, so it's something I really want to explore a bit more. It's, not, it's something new to me. I've only just come across it. Excellent. So all of that will be up on the website, highlights and links page under the main Together 2012 TV menu from about six o'clock. We also put the edited show up on a Friday from about eight o'clock. So if you're watching this live and you want to recommend it to friends, the recording, the live recording should be up in about 10 minutes, but we will put an edited recording up later where we've just smoothed the sound 
around, but if you are prone, you know, if visual disturbances upset you, we just take the little bits of editing out that are inevitable when we're going live. So next week, like I say, the Kitchen Carnival is in full swing. We have our Dance on Screen Club on Monday where we're making a film for the Kitchen Carnival. We have our workshop with Clary Salandy on Wednesday. So again, drop us a line if you're interested or just have a look at the 2021 programme on the website. So we're going to go back and carry on watching the Olympics. Robin, do you just want to reintroduce the film that we're going to close with for our and finally spot? Oh, of course, I'd be delighted to. So the film coming up um, is me interviewing an artist called Linda Ferran um, from Armagh, which is in Northern Ireland. Uh, Linda is a dancer and she's going to tell you a little bit about herself um, and her film, which is called Armour Off. Today I am talking with Linda Ferran who joins us all the way from Armagh in Northern Ireland. Before we get to a chat, we're going to run a little film I used to think they won't notice me if I'm skinny or quiet. But who wants to blend in? I feel a bit like the news colour as we age. We start out as multi coloured beings for the colours of the rainbow. But as we get older, it feels like a colour fades. We all start to look the same. It becomes easier to be overlooked, to blend in to our surroundings. We begin to disappear. We begin to be forgotten. Linda, you're a dancer. Yes. That might not be the obvious career choice that people would think that you chose. Could you introduce yourself a bit and tell us what dancing means to you? Uh, hello, my name is Linda Fruin. I've always wanted to be a dancer my whole life, since I was a very small child. I mean, I used to dance in the house all the time, torture my mother. Every time music came on, I was dancing. I had to move, you know, it just, it was an urge I had, you know, I had to do it, so, but as I got older in teenage years, I was more aware of my disability, and that there was no disabled dancers, there was no one for me to aspire to, so I kind of put it to the back of my mind, and just got on with life, you know, as they do. And I got married and had two children. But I still wanted to perform. I still, it was always there. I just kept pushing it away. And it was only when I hit 40 that I got the opportunity to train with the dance group in Delta and to get professional training as a dancer. So it was the same time I was getting divorced. So it kind of hit, you know, that's a good time. You know, it's something new for me to do. So I did that and I trained with quite a lot of professional disabled, non-disabled dancers. So that's how it started. It's a lifelong ambition that I wanted to do. And now I'm doing it. I think... It it's really important that as disabled people and disabled artists, you know, you, you kept that dream inside until you got the opportunity, you know, and thank goodness you did. You know, I've seen you dance. It's incredible. So we've just seen the short clip, uh, which I understand is, is part of a film uh, that's going to be showing you dancing at a festival soon. Now, the whole dance, I understand, is called Armour Off. Would you kind of tell us a bit about it and, and why the title? Well, actually, the idea was in my head quite open now. a few years ago, right? So I made two sets the people who I really am. But during that last year, I think like most people, 
that Stephanie Garden pondering about you know life and then towards the end of and it was the second lockdown over here. It was like August of September. And I was a post I had a dance company that I worked for, but I wanted to do a soul piece. And I said yes to as long as it's in my house. Because that's where, you know, everything I do is in my house when I'm not on stage. So the idea came in and I work with Caroline Bowditch. She is in Melbourne, Australia. And there was a 10 hour difference. I woke up over the Zoom. It was seven o'clock at night here. But I think it was like six in the morning. But she was, which worked out okay because I'm not a morning person, but she is. But uh, that she worked out really, really well. So, more, as I said, the majority of it was done by Zoom. We rehearsed it in my living room. And they've done in the day of recording, they said, no, nope, they want the living room, they want in the kitchen. Because after I spent most of the time in the kitchen, I went on my bed. And we did that, and on and off means when I'm in my home, I take me on and off. As a physically disabled person, I'm very aware of people that I walk outside. I sat at my front door and they were how people see me. They don't see me. They see my the body, they see the way I walk, they see how I wobble, they hear the way I speak. And I, I get judged on that most of the time, not on who I am. So I wanted the piece to show that when I come home, Everything's, you know, everything falls away. The armor comes off because I've, I've always said, as soon as I walk out my, my front door and people, to see people, I put my armor on because I know I'm being watched. I know I'm being stared at and judged. So I want to show that when I'm home, this is how I am. And the armor comes off and I can dance how I want. I don't have to put my front. And it also touches on the fact that I'm getting older and as a, as a, as a female with a disability, we're treated, I'm, I'm treated very different now than I was when I was in my 20s. I'm still stirred at that odd since I hit my 50s. I've been aware oh, oh, that I'm not, you know, as visible. As a woman, it's, I suppose it's complicated, but it touches on age as well. How I feel about my, my stuff as we get older and have some disability and how I am when I'm on my own, as opposed to how I am when I'm with someone. I hope that makes sense. No, no, that's absolutely fantastic answer. And I think, you know, you're you're covering so many kind of issues um within, you know, the dance and the piece that you've put together. I for one can't wait to see the full piece. Can you just tell our audience when it's gonna be shown and how they can see it? Well, it's part of the Galway Film Star Festival and it's shown online from July twenty fifth. It has been shown a few other places. And it was in the Chicago Film Festival three months ago, and I won Best Short Documentary Award for it. It's in the right. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm hoping this is the, the plan is that towards the end of this year, October, that I, me and Caroline Bordich get in touch again for Zoom. I've been hoping to from next year on it to 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 it as a, a live performance 
So there will be bits added into Star City Live audience. But the film will be doing you know, different festivals and different film festivals. But it will be on Go, Go Away Film Festival from July 25th online. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, and the fact that you're planning your, well, your extension of the work and thinking about, you know, hopefully being able to do live performances probably next year now. You know, it's good to have that outlook, that positive outlook that we are going to be able to go live soon. So, Linda, thank you ever so much. And we will get the details up on the Together website as well so people can come and view the film. Thank you very much. Thank you.